Hello everybody and welcome back to our continuing adventures on the Cyber Defenders platform. Um, found a exercise on there called Dump Me that requires the use of volatility and as I need more practice with volatility potentially for the BTL1 exam I have coming up, I figured what the hell. <laughs> Kill two birds with one stone. Get a little bit more practice. And at the same portion, be able to sit there and make video content. So, win-win, right? <laughs> so, this was released, what? May 30th, 2021. So, it's almost a year old. 16 questions and like a 1.2 gig mem dump. So, scenario, one of the SOC analysts took a memory dump from a machine infected with a meterpreter malware as a digital forensicators. Pretty sure it's just supposed to be singular, but okay. Your job is to analyze the dump, extract the available indicators of compromise, IOCs, and answer the provided questions. Well, hooray. Uh, so the very first thing is, okay, what is the SHA-1 hash of the triage-memory.mem? Parentheses memory dump. So that could be done any number of ways. I, ha I happen to observe that 7-zip includes a... What is it? You right-click on the file, you go down to the CRC or SHA, and you can generate a SHA-1 hash from there, along with CRC-32, CRC-64, and SHA-256. Or I think you can basically have all four generated at the same time. Me, I tend to like it a little bit easier. So with all current version of Windows, you just open up PowerShell, git dash file hash, and obviously since we want to do SHA-1, it defaults to SHA-256. Um, you would do dash algorithm space SHA-1, and then basically the location of the .mem file. So since I dumped my Windows volatility standalone in the same folder that I'm keeping the triage dash memory .mem file, it just makes it a little bit simpler. So basically, go to the dump me folder that I created that's got now the volatility and the memory file, and basically just run through the command. And so we get C95E8 Charlie Charlie, all the way ending in Alpha 27 Alpha Bravo Delta. 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 So we're just going to copy that out. We're going to take that out and we're going to see as to whether or not is to whether or not if we are on point we are on point <laughs> it's also a good thing just to make sure that um you know there wasn't some sort of file corruption or some sort of hiccup that happened in the middle of transmission or extraction or anything else along those lines what volatility profile is the most appropriate for the machine all right, so that I now need to switch over to my command prompt and bring that up to the window. So I have done just a little bit of work to get some of this stuff done because especially with determining the profile in use, it can take a little bit of time. Same thing with generating the SHA-1, especially with files that are over a gig in size. So just to save a little bit of time, I did do a little bit of the legwork. So as you can see that here, calling the volatility standalone, doing dash F, specifying the .mem file, and then we're asking for it to scan it and find the uh, image info for it. So the suggested profile is Win7SP164. So win seven sp one x sixty four. So let's take the window down. We've got it typed in. We're good to go. Now 
Now comes the extra fun part. So now we need to find the process ID of, oh, excuse me, finally get enough sleep <laughs> since I have today off. I'm recording this on uh, the 6th and I haven't even had coffee yet and it's almost 11 a.m. I know, why would I sit there and put myself through that? So effectively, we've got all of what we want. So we need to add in, oh, here, let me, let me bring that up to the screen. So we want to find the process ID of notepad. So we need to now specify the profile. So that was win 7 sp one x 64 And so we'll have to add, make sure that's added to every time we go through and have this checked. So that way it's using the same profile. So now we've got a bunch of different commands to go through and run. Things like ps list, ps tree. So ps list uh, uses the plugin to list the processes in the terminal. So that'll be the first one we start with, just to take a look and see if we can find what we're looking for from there. And the processor's not being tapped all the way out. This unfortunately does, just does take a little bit of time. So I've got everything turned off that effectively I can that might screw with the uh, how long it takes for this stuff to go through. But if you go through and do something you set like this yourself, don't be surprised as to whether or not if you're just kind of sitting there scratching your head like, okay, are we doing anything today? Ooh, wow. Just right off the bat, that doesn't look good at all. Much less the fact that we got W script going. But so this might be something we're going to be coming back to. And I swear I haven't worked forward through this yet, but that just looks bad. All right, so we are looking for Notepad. You notice how everything's nice and broken out. So the memory address, the process name. The PID handles when it started, blah, blah, blah. Um, and of course, I wasn't paying attention and looking for Notepad. Oh, there it is. So it looks like 3032. So let me get that off. 3032. Submit. Hey. <laughs> Three down, 13 left. <laughs> but we're, we're, we're making progress, so that's always good. Okay. So now we want to see about trying to find out what the child process of WScript. Or no. Oh, yeah, WScript.exe is. So to do that, we would switch. So instead of PS list, let's do PS tree. So we can basically see as to how all this stuff breaks out. Let me see if I can't expand the window a little bit. I might have to move it on here. Yeah, that, that kind of fills up the whole thing. If I make it a little bit bigger too, I might actually be able to just take up the whole window kind of. Okay, well, we got that. So, okay, so we're going to run PS tree, and again, we're going to end up having to wait. I mean, it would be kind of nice if these results could be, like, I guess, indexed partially. So that way, all this stuff would already be, like, relevant. It's now just kind of going back and kind of checking to see where it comes off and just reorganizes them. I don't know if that would save any time. I am not a programmer. <laughs> I can read some programming, but... So I guess effectively what I was going to see about doing when I started college, but it's not the way that it worked out. Okay. So we got to find W script on this. And you notice how they're broken out in terms of dots on the side. 
So first things first is find W script. Oh geez, look at that. So we got hfs.exe, W script, and then that weird honking process. Ah, uh, no! <laughs> Ah, uh, cripe. Okay, so apparently they just want what? The name? Yes, the process name, because they're ending it in .exe. Alright, so we've copied and pasted. That's our weird uwkpjfjdzm.exe. So let's see as to whether or not... Okay. What is the IP address of the machine at the time the RAM dump was created? I've never had to sit there and try to figure out what the IP address is before. Apparently this is a good idea that uh, I'm going through doing this then. I think that one is going to require the NetScan plugin. Because I think that gives us kind of the, the rundown and everything. So let's just... Oh crap, 11 o'clock. No idea. Waiting on the video to start. So anyways, okay, so let's go back to this. So we're just going to do up arrow again so we get the same exact. Don't have to retype the entire command line. Always good. Always good. Let's scan. Still waiting. Okay, well, at least we're getting some results here. There we go. Uh, we're still waiting. Go pop this in. Okay. So we are looking for some sort of evidence as to what the local IP is. I mean, we could, we could always be, you know, try to be a smart ass and always use the 127.0.0.1, the local loopback. <laughs> it's technically valid, although I'm fairly certain it's not going to be what they want. But it looks like it definitely starts with at least, like, 10. So it looks like out of everything we're seeing here, it's going to be 10 0, 0, 101. So let's take this down and transition back. 10 0, 0, 101. Yes. <laughs> oh... Based on answering regarding the infected pit, can you determine the IP of the attacker? So, oh, der. Here, let me take, bring back up the command window so we can go through this together. So effectively, we want to sit there and see if we can find that weird looking executable. If we can. So, right here. So, if I had to guess, it's going to be 10.0.0.106 given here. Isn't 444 or triple four, quad fours? Isn't that the typical one from Interpreter to try to use? It's been a little bit of time since I've been inside of Kali and screwing with Metasploits. So, uh, so we're going to run with that 106. T 
10, 0, 0, 106. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So now we're down to 7 out of 16. I think this deserves some coffee. Oh. Okay. How many processes are associated with VC runtime? So what? Visual C runtime 410.dll? Um... All right, so here's our tree. Or er, no, that's just the process list. Sorry, hang on. Here's our tree. Hmm. Ew, I'm looking for a DLL, not the execute. Okay. Um, Okay, instead of nets, I mean, that's not showing up there, is it? No, it's not. It's all. Well, that's an interesting process name, question mark, RK Diamond, question mark, question mark, question mark, question <laughs> mark. Um, PSX view. So it should print expected and hidden processes. So this is the combination of PS list and PS scan. So if there's something hidden, we should be able to kind of suss it out through there. As I understand it, it does like a PS list and then the PS scan, and then compares the results, basically trying to signal out things that would be uh, not showing in like a standard PS list. As I understand it. But like I've said, I mean, volatility is definitely not my strong suit. Haven't had to do so or too much in the line of memory forensics, which, I mean, it, it's great the fact that we haven't had any sort of compromises that have led to that in a while, but. Just kind of one of those things. Oh, sorry, I got, uh, I put the earpiece in, so I've got uh, the InfoSec Live channel is apparently doing some sort of thing currently. So it's like, okay, well, I can sit there and listen to it. But by the same token, also now, I need to make sure that either I'm pausing this or I'm sitting there and, you know, saying something so you guys just aren't sitting there seeing me, you know, pick my finger or pick my nose or something. It's taken a while, or did my dumb butt actually just not? No. Oh. oh. <laughs> uh, that's one hell of a dump right there. Hmm. There is nothing there that matches that. 
So again, we're looking for I don't really want to use a hint. Because I'm just not seeing a process that's anything VC runtime. Okay, um, I'm going to pause this. I've got a, a couple of different um, resources that are not. So let's see, we've got. Let's see about trying to get these things loaded up. I'll include these. Oh, no. Well, crap. <laughs> One of them is just gone now. Crap. Crap, 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 crap. I kind of wish I would have saved it. Oh, forensics is gone. because we're going to have to go through and dump some of these things at some particular point. Okay. Um, crap. All right, I'm going to have to end up pausing this to see if I can find a, like an older copy of the... Uh, volatility walkthrough stuff that I was sitting there looking at in terms of trying to get some sort of idea as to how how we can go about finding the answer to um, question seven. So I will be back. Well, I think I might have found it. <laughs> so apparently there is a plugin called DLL List. Unfortunately, it outputs a large, very, very large amount of data. So it looks like that's what? SMSS? That's CRSSS? All right, so we're going to have to kind of hop around a bit to see if we can't find what we're looking for. Services, LSAS, LSM, SVC host, SVC host, SVC host. <laughs> um, oh wait, these are all So I wonder if it's like, if I can specify or as to whether or not the DLL is just going to show up.
because this looks like it's just doing the same exact thing where it's okay great we can see the DLLs that are responsible for it all right so I got an idea and apparently it looks like it's a single digit at least by the, the format they give us so what I'm gonna try to do is I'm just gonna grab all this space. I'm gonna open up a new Notepad++ window. I'm gonna dump it in there. And then I am going to just do a find all in current document. Oh, I am not prepared for that portion at all. <laughs> Uh, but let's just see how many times out of that DLL list, assuming I'm even on the right track. So apparently it only showed up once, and you can see it. No, you can't. Sorry. There. <laughs> so basically I just grabbed all the stuff there from the volatility list of from DLL list. And copied and pasted, so it looks like there's only one thing that's doing it. So that was line So if we browse up, so apparently office click to run Apparently is the only thing that's there So Let's see as to whether or not if we got that. Dang it. Well, I thought that would be what we'd end up needing. So I did end up finding a another copy. Apparently they just kind of moved where it was on their site. So I'll include the links to this and then there's also a good Medium article in regards to being able to kind of see the different aspects that they go through that some of this I might end up having to refer back to. And I think it also links to yeah some of the samples you can get to basically play with. So you can try to get better. But unfortunately, it still doesn't help me much because, okay, we've gone through and I've run it. And at least from what I can find lists of, it only shows up once. So unless I screwed something up in the copy and paste... So I think what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to pause this again and I'm just going to kind of go up and down since I'm already at the, the end of the, the window there and just see as to whether or not if I can catch any additional ones or it could be that I need to sit there and do something else with the or a different plugin but this was effectively about as close as I had gotten to actually see DLLs uh, in play. Everything else was just the, the executable processes. So. But, yeah. Uh, all the fun. But I wanted something of a challenge and, you know, basically to sit there and try to get a little bit better with this. So. 
I really can't complain. I'm getting what I wanted. <laughs> Although I really wish there was a way, just like if I was doing this in Linux, to just kind of grep um, the output inside of Windows. Um, just to go through and have it just focus on anything there. And maybe there is. I'm just not consciously aware of it right now. But Okay, back to the drawing board. I'll pick it back up when I think I've got maybe, possibly, the <laughs> what I ended up having to do to get this. Okay, so I checked with somebody else that I know that has gone through and done this, and they noted the same type of problems cropping up when trying to do this with the standalone version. They did confirm that it should be more than one, but less than ten. They're not going to give me a direct answer. Um, so I, part that was missed out here is that I downloaded the Volatility 3 onto my box, um, and then ran that with the export to a DLL.txt, and looked, and I got two. So, okay, it's more than one, less than ten. Tried that, no. So the other suggestion that I got was to sit there and fire up Remnox, make sure it's updated, and then just try running the rest of the um, exercise through there to see as to whether or not if that comes up. So it might have something to do with the fact that we're trying to do this on Windows as opposed to Linux. I don't know. So I'm getting Remnix fired up, and I'll have to adjust the Windows so that way everything shows up. But so... Just to kind of document where I'm at with this. I'm going to pause again until Remnex is up. Okay. Remnex is loaded. I got the, uh, apparently it's 1.2 gig compressed. Uh, extracted, it's like 5 plus gigs. Uh, the mem file into Remnox. So I've gone and run the same exact thing, sticking with volatility 2.6, although in this case it looks like 2.61 is what's on Remnox. Running the same exact commands, so the so volatility.py or vol.py dash f triage dash memory dot mem dash dash profile equals win7 sp1 x64 and then dll list, but because we're in Linux, I can sit there and do the crep command. And I have no idea why, <laughs> but we get five. <laughs> I don't know what the difference is, is between Linux OS running volatility and Windows, but apparently there's there's obviously some sort of difference, enough, because the most I could even get off of even running Vol 3 was keep forgetting as to where everything I, I keep wanting to look forward at my bigger monitor here when in reality the laptop that I've got with the built-in webcam that's streaming off this stuff is to the left I should probably switch stuff around but okay so supposedly supposedly let me go ahead and move Remnax down on the list so we're gonna knock that out and we are gonna try to see if indeed the answer is not one not two but five as per Linux. I think I'm just going to stop trying to do any of this stuff on Windows. I'll just start doing everything in Remnix. Remnix. <sighs> okay, so after dumping the infected process, what is the MD5 of the hash? Well, did we end up... I mean, we kind of figured out, you know, the child process of W script is that uh, UW, KP, blah, 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 blah. So, we want to take a look and see. Uh, let's go back, and we'll probably have to rerun the... Actually, no, we won't. Um, let's see, that was the, that was the admin command prompt. I realize you guys can't see what I'm sitting there doing right now. But, so let's do this. Um, turn the, this back on. This comes in. And 
I know that we're going to need the process list or the PID and everything else like that of that weird process. Because we're going to have to dump it, and thankfully, since it's a, Lin a Linux-based operating system, it should have like MD5SUM, SHA-1SUM, and SHA-256SUM included in its in, er, in the distro. So, so we are. This is this is what we're looking for. Not so much the memory address, but so it looks like it's going to be three four. Nine six. So then, what we're gonna do is let's bring Remnox to the front. So three four nine six. So we're gonna bring that up, and then we can use the plugin of proc dump. We're going to list the PID, so that's, what did I say, 3496? And then we want it basically just dumped. It should just dump it in the current folder, so the slash download slash dump me folder. And we can kind of check that by going back and bringing up dump me. Requ oh, requires an argument. Um, yes, maybe? Let's see if I'm getting that right or wrong. And this is real time, mind you. <laughs> All right, we got an executable. And our whole thing is that we want the it was MD5, right? Yes. Okay, so then we go back to this, and we go MD5 sum, and we tell it executable. It should generate it right quick. Oops. Ah. Copy. Okay. I almost need three monitors the way this goes. Okay, so we're going to knock Remnox out. We're going to move the command pro window out of the way. We bring this back, and we're going to dump the MD5 hash that we pulled using proc dump and then running MD5 sum. <laughs> All right. Oh, and at 8 done, that's, that's what our, that's our halfway point. We're doing pretty stinking good. I mean, it's... 38 minutes of recording currently, but I think we're going to just try to keep this as a, a one for, because I need to, well, I suppose I could cut it and basically just immediately pick right back up, so make this a part one, part two. I don't know. Okay, so next, uh, screw it, we'll just go through and do it. Just get it done. I mean, nobody said anything one way or the other, but I'd prefer not to. Okay, so our next aspect is we want the LM hash of Bob's account. Um, I f yeah, I think there is a a hash dump we can run. I don't know what format it's going to pop it out, but let's see what we can get. I mean, oh, wait. Crap. Crap, 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 crap. Let's bring Remnox back to the front. Transition that over. Okay. So basically just the same command as before, but instead of proc dump and then the options there, we're just doing hash dump and see as to whether or not if this works. Oh. 
No, yes, possibly around about the corner. Oh. So, how about that local sports team? <laughs> So apparently there is. There's a a hash dump, a cash dump, and an LSA dump. Okay. So apparently we it worked. We have something. Um, and according to this, what we're looking for should... Oh, excuse me. Sorry. This is that's pitiful. I mean, I've got... I think 10 hours of sleep, more than I think I get any other point during the week. And, okay, I guess the real thing is coffee's still about halfway full. That's probably why. So, uh, looking at this, they say that it should start with Alpha Alpha Delta 3, and we see Bob there in the bottom left-hand corner, Alpha Alpha Delta 3. I'm going to have to make sure that this definitely stays in my uh, immediate area. It'll be the, the first link that I put in the video description. Um, because, or well, technically, will I be putting in the CT? Well, I'll make a notes section. That should probably work better. Okay, so we got that. So let's transition back and dump that in. <laughs> the first time you're using hash dump. So, I know technically I think it's only the second or third time of me using proc dump. So, this is definitely forcing me to sit there and go through the uh, RTFM and figure stuff out. So, I'm, I am very glad that I'm doing this. Okay, what memory protection? Oh boy. Okay, so let's see. Offside window here, VAD. VAD, used by Windows Memory Manager to describe memory ranges used by a process as they are allotted. When a process allocates memory with virtual alloc C, or, well, technically alloc, the memory manager creates an entry in the VAD tree. Apparently there's a VAD info. Really? Okay. So apparently it's going to work, I guess. So we'll just put VAD info and I think we'll do a grep again because I've got a very bad feeling that if we just run it, it's going to be like the DLL list and it's just going to spit info all over the place. So let's just try to avoid. So we go here. We go VAD info, and we want to grip for the memory address that we pulled.
Still waiting. <laughs> I swear it's not an Irish coffee either. This is one of the aspects of my personality. When I sit there and have to actually have to sit there and do something like this um, that I haven't done before, I tend to get a little bit giddy. <laughs> but... Uh, there's just so much that I want to do. That was kind of the problem, too, especially when I was doing my master's. I gave you three tracks to run down, and it's just like, but it all sounds good. <laughs> anyway, so I got the same problem and sitting there trying to figure out exactly, you know, what I want to do career-wise, because it all sounds good. <laughs> Well, we got one hit. But I'm not seeing... Well, it's still running, so I can't really get too far ahead of it. And we'll go back to my other document here. It's like, I wonder as to whether if there's like a fad. Nope. Fad does not show up in here. Yep, that was what I was kind of concerned about. The processor on this thing is entirely tapped out, so I don't know how well it's going to sit there and go. So what I'm going to probably do is just pause the recording while this stuff's running through just to make it quicker um, on the viewer side. Okay, so I took the option to grip out and it looks like it's a multi-line response this is just what this is just running the actual uh vad info no grep anything else like that so much like much like the concern with the dll host or dll list plugin it just spews data so if i remember correctly you can specify an option after your term um, to grab where the term hits using grip and then like a number of lines afterwards I think it's lowercase c or capital C so I think that's what I'm gonna end up having to do so the way that this stuff spits out it's not just one line so I need the the, the fo <laughs> Trying to get everything lined up, the, the following lines afterwards, if I'm going to get any sort of real information out of this. And I guess depending as to how long this can go, I can go and double check um, that option with grep, because this looks like this is going to go for a little bit. So, again, pausing to reduce the time wasted on the uh, video, so you're just not watching me watching this run through and spew. So, be back in a second. Okay, picking back up. So, you'll see that I sat there, ran the command, and I told it to go through, and so it was capital C. I had a little bit of time to sit there and take a Google search for grep options. So, apparently... Oh, and of course, I don't think I have it on the grabbed browser, but apparently... Dash A is to sit there and grab, you know, whatever the number of lines after S capital B does it before 
and supposedly C will do before and after. So I guess technically I could have done uh, just A, but I wanted to grab just a wide swath just to make sure that, you know, I'm on the right track with this stuff. Because, I don't know, I was trying to sit there and manually dig through that stuff. I mean, it was still going like five minutes, and it's just like, nope, okay, we're going to have to interrupt this. <laughs> too much <laughs> so what was the question that we were trying to answer because it's been a little bit of time on this side uh, memory protection constants so the format is apparently capital page underscore okay so by looking at this it looks like it's going to be all capital page underscore read only so let's transition back. We're just going to put caps lock on page underscore read only. <laughs> it's been several minutes. It hasn't been 30 minutes. I guess maybe it's been about maybe 15 spent sitting there waiting for that to just spit out output and play around with the stuff. So just in case you ever get the idea that, you know, I immediately know what the heck I'm doing, I don't. I'll, okay, not a lot of the time, but it's especially in situations like this where volatility is one of my areas of weakness, you know, this is why I'm trying to sit there and not cut out as much of the, um, the ums and the ohs and the just trying to work through this stuff. I mean, as much as I would love to come across as, you know, the consummate professional that knows everything i really don't need to sit there and try to get a, a an attitude or an ego in regards to that stuff so ergo why well, i'm trying to show a little bit more of this stuff that yes even somebody that you know has done what i've done we still struggle at certain aspects it's still slamming the head against the wall it's still constantly trying to work through everything so uh, even the supposed you know you want to you use the old term infosec rock stars i'm sure they're in the same exact boat i mean there's only so much that fits up here after that it's okay what can you sit there and organize notes so in the event you have to go back to something and like i did said previously in this video volatility is not something i've had to sit there and make a whole heck of a lot of use out of but okay enough uh, enough waffling let's uh oh man 11 so we're on like the final five questions <laughs> it's like i like doing this stuff but i would be kind of glad when this is done okay Ooh. starting at and ending at Ooh. i wonder if this is going to be more of the aspect in terms of I wonder if I could just output. Wait, how is this formatted? Okay, so we could technically do a long something like this couldn't we so we do like a grep and then put in the range that they want because it does specify end i don't know if i guess i could include start and then we could do just to cover everything we could do like another you know another c10 to cover everything above and below well let's try that um Except I need the actual range. Oh crap, I just realized. I'm sitting there showing or wagging, wagging the finger at everything, and I don't think you guys can see that. So starting in 33, Charlie, 
quad 0, ending in 33 delta quad F, or franc. Okay, let's bring Remnox back up to the front, because I'm fairly certain... I think this will work. If not, okay, you guys get to sit there and see me fail. <laughs> um, so that range to that range, plop that in. Okay, let, let's... Got it in my notepad, so let's see if we can do that. So, start. Or, wait, no, it's not capital, is it? And then 10 lines back and forth. Because so I think VAD info. Oh, we just want to grab the whole. Oh, maybe it's not single quote. Maybe I got to do double. Yeah. Okay. Let's try the double quote. You can tell how often I end up doing grip for long strings like that. Yep, and processor is about 85% pegged, so it's it's working. It's working, it's just taking a second. Like with everything else, I mean, if it took roughly 10 to 15 minutes for it to sit there and basically spit down the side with all this stuff, I mean... Okay, so we found it. It looks like it goes to A and okay, so all right, we've got a a range of stuff back and forth. We did find the exact section, so the start and end that what they were specifying. And then they want memory protection. So it looks like page no access. So we're looking at the area that got flagged, so that shows up in red, and then the, the subsequent below that, the lines. Looks like protection page no access. So let's, let, let's try it. I mean, it looks like, I mean, the format that they give us, it starts with page underscore no access. <laughs> oh! There was a VBS script that ran on the machine. What is the name of the script? Submit without the extension. So this is probably what triggered uh, the W script, .exe, which then led to the weird named process that we extracted, did the MD5 on, everything else like that. Okay. Uh, Remnox, back to it. So are we going to do a uh, command line or CMD line that I've used before as well. So I think that's going to be effectively where we're at. Yeah, broke. Okay, good. Yeah, fine. Um, so we're going to go through and we're going to do CMD line. It's probably going to spit out a bunch of stuff. So let's do another one. Grep. We're going to do the same thing. So it should be a VBS file. And then let's just do 10 back and forth and see what we get. So we'll get other things in the line. So we'll have to kind of jump around and look. But.
Oh, here, here we go. W script. No law. Okay, so they want just the no VBS. That's a definitely a weird. The sad thing is, it's like okay, once if they don't ask in regards to that, I think I'm gonna probably pull up, um, just proc dump that sucker and see if I can just kind of work my way through the code to see what the heck's going on. Although I should probably take the MD5 that we had, dump it into VT. It's probably already been analyzed, so we know what the end result is. Um, but let's so we're gonna transition back. Oh, uh, application was run on 2019 3 7 58 UTC. What was the name of the program? Include the extension. Does that mean I'm going to actually have to run the. What, what plugin is it? I forget. Um, it's not one that I've used before, but I am aware of it. Timeliner? To try to create like a list of all the stuff that goes down. We want I didn't realize there was something to actually grab the clipboard. I realize not overly, <sighs> not fun or exciting or anything else like that in regards to this. Um, well, let's timeliner, and we'll see. It, it's probably going to be freaking. I don't know how they're going to do the format for time. Although it looks like it's going to be exactly the same. That's right there. Um, okay. Interrupt that. Let's do the same thing like what we have been doing. Grep. What was... Oh. Crap. I didn't even bother to show. But Okay, so I started running the command. We'll grab that. We'll bring Ren next to the front. I get so engaged in this. Okay, so bring this up. So I tried running Timeliner, and as it starts to actually kick the stuff out, we've got, it looks like roughly the same type of format. So my thought is, 
Let's run tie liner and have it grep just for the specified time that's there. And then, like before, we'll get 10 lines before, 10 lines after, just to go. And let's see as to whether or not if we'll get any hits. So, again, going to pause so that way the video is a little bit quicker because we're now over an hour in record time. So, and then I'll pick it back up once it's run through and hopefully found something that matches. Okay, back. So I kind of gave up. We were trying to sit there and be mindful of how long this was taking, mostly because the fact I had work dragged me in for something. Um, but we can see that the timeliner, along with the specification, did give us a actual hit. So I guess apparently this is in the si sh bleh, sim shim cache. And apparently there's an entry in there for Skype.exe. So... But, so we're going to try Skype.exe. Uh, so we're going to take and get Remnox out of the way. And skype.exe. <laughs> Final three questions. 14, 15, 16, baby. Oh, okay. What was written in Notepad at the time when the memory dump was created? So we actually have to try to figure out what was... Okay, that's, that's going to be interesting. <laughs> what are the contents? That's going to sound like a use case, I think, for memdump? I mean, unless it's been saved. A memory dump of a process will extract everything of the current status of the process. The proc dump module will only extract the code. So then, so we're looking for the PIDs. So we need to go back to what was the PID of Notepad, if we're going to go through and answer that. And thankfully, I still have the command window from the last run that we did, or the, how we started this before Windows decided to just not give us what we needed. And hopefully this isn't going to just screw us up. So I need to find... Oh, wait, didn't we... Were we asked as to what the PID of Notepad was? So don't we kind of already know? Yeah, 3032. And it was accepted as the answer. So, okay, that's this. We're wasting time with this. Considering the fact that I might actually have to... <sighs> might have to work on my day off. But, you know, it happens. So then our whole aspect is memdump dash p thirty thirty two. And then we want to do what is it? Dump dir No. Do I wanna do a dump dir? <laughs> uh we might need to specify a name. Or will it just kind of like what we did when we told it to do the extraction? It was that UK blah, 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 but it ended up being named like executable.3096.exe or whatever it was. Yeah, execu, okay. 3496. And then we have DMP. So we get 3032.dmp.
are we done or what's what's going on? Okay, there we go. Uh, and then we'll run strings on thirty thirty two dot DMP. No, we won't. <laughs> Um, is nano included? It is. Okay. Um, so let's do nano 3032.dmp. Rather than do the, the strings. Something tells me I'm not going to like this. Nope, because there's just there's garbage all over the place. Um... Yeah, I don't like how that looks. That's... And what's the format this thing should be? Flag, left... What is that? Left arrow? Bracket? So could we just do flag with grip and see if it would shake out? Um, nope. Close that. So <clears throat> uh, strings 3032.dmp grip with flag and then the left arrow. Do we get anything? How big is that file, anyways? That DMP. Holy crap! 476.6 megs? Uh, it doesn't look like it made a difference anyways. We weren't able to find anything. <sighs> so it should be in here. Okay, I guess I'm pausing again to sit there and I guess have to do some research as to how Notepad stores content and memory. <sighs> okay, back at it. Apparently Notepad stores the contents as little Indian, Indian, and 16-bit. So apparently strings you can do a dash E and then lowercase l for a little Indian. Indian. I want to say Indian for whatever reason, because it's just basically one letter difference. <laughs> but
but basically if you specify the encoding scheme and run through the same thing you end up getting the whole aspect of that red bull is life with underscores along with th th thk thk so i'm assuming that it's going to be the whole flag red bull is life While I was waiting for that, I had constantly looks like I'm going to be <laughs> on the clock today, getting stuff done. But yeah, I found it in, of all places, Stack Overflow, so <laughs> to check. And given the fact that okay, looking at the format, so blank underscore two characters underscore. So yeah, I think it's going to be that. <laughs> It took me a little bit longer to figure out uh, that strings had the uh, dash E option and then actually w how Notepad stores its content. Oh, what is the short name of the file at record 59045? Like, short name is in, like, the 8.3 standard for, like, MS-DOS. So if anything longer than that, it's, like, tilde 1. So what? Like six characters tilde one dot exe or whatever the case is. <sighs> Crap. So they want. <laughs> yeah, more work stuff. Okay, gonna pause. I have to figure out as to whether or not if what file records. So as to whether or not if I've got to do like a. F um proc dump or file scan or what the case is but duty calls okay back for another quick second here and hopefully so apparently it's we're looking for file records so it looks like we're gonna have to obviously reference the master file table and thankfully there is a plugin for volatility to access the mft so it looks like mft parser so then I guess we're just going to go back to the same exact thing like what we were doing. And I'm assuming it's going to sit there and dump a bunch of stuff out. So MFT parser. And I am just going to have it dump out to... Or could I do grep again? Oh, screw it. Grep's been doing pretty well thus far. <laughs> um, except I don't know the format that this stuff's going to take. Ah, screw it. I mean, if I, I get it wrong, I get it wrong. Uh, we're going to grep four. Five nine zero four five. We're gonna do a capital C for before and after ten lines again because that's served us pretty well. I don't know as to whether or not if I should have put that in quote double quotes or not. I mean, there's no special characters. It's just numbers, right? I don't know. We'll see how it goes. If not, then I can just see about trying to have it extract out to a text file and then see as to whether or not if I can just... I could cat the text file and then grep it anyways to see as to if anything comes up for 59045. But... Actually, did I even spell that right? I would assume it would have thrown up an error by now. I go back to the volatility cheat sheet that I was looking at. M-F-T-P-A-R-S-E-R. -E which is exactly... Okay, good. <laughs> oh, I just end up being so worried that I mistyped something and just wasting time. Because we're now almost... Geez, hour and 20 minutes. This is going to be most of my day. <laughs> the amount of jump cuts, everything else like that that I've been doing. Uh, 
uh, but that's okay. It is what it is. All right, so this looks like this is going to take a little bit of time too, so I'm just going to go ahead and pause this while this is running, and we'll see at the outside of what the results come back with. Hopefully, what we're looking for. So this looks like it's supposed to be an XLS file, so we'll see as to whether or not we get lucky with this. Otherwise, the only other thing I can think of is to go through and... Like I said, export it into a TXT file and then just try to cut through that. But we'll see what we get. 59045. Yeah, okay. So it's basically just kind of stuck waiting for everything to process. So, okay. Pausing now. So I think it finished and I think we ended up using up our 10 lines. Because we got a bunch of info there, but then it just kind of craps out. So standard information, and then it just kind of stops short of the file name. Crap. <laughs> well, at least we have an idea. Um, are you done? Or I mean, what's going on? Oh, it might still be searching the uh, portion. Well, we got an idea. Yeah, I know. Broken pipe. Okay, what was it? If not C, what was the other one for grip? After. So capital A is after. So what if we just do capital A, because we know it's going to find that second item, and let's just up it to 25 and see how that works out. Maybe it's a failure, maybe it's not. But, okay, pausing again, because this is going to take a little bit of time. Okay, so that apparently worked. So it looks like... So we need the short name. So there's the long name, employeeinformation.xlsx. And we're looking for an Excel one, so it looks like employee-tilde-1.xls. So let's go back to this. Uh, cap blocks again, please. M ploy tilde one dot xls <laughs> I'll take this win. Oh, uh, okay. And this box was exploited and is running Meterpreter. What is the infected PID? I wonder if that's the weird one where it was the, the question mark KR diamond question mark question mark question mark question mark. So, I'm not, well, actually, no. We, I've still got the original. That was up. Um, 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 um. The command window. Which I have... Don't, I need to move. <laughs> uh, okay. Wait, I did go through and... I mean, this wouldn't be like the interpreter session thing, would it? Where was the hash that I had uh, for our infected? Yeah, right here. 690 blah 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 blah. Virus total... Oh yeah, I guess it would kind of help if I turned caps lock off. <laughs> oh crap, I'm, uh, I got the command window opened up. Still taking up the thing. I mean, does this come back as, like, Meterpreter or anything else like that? MS shellcode? Well, Microsoft picks it up as Meterpreter. Could it actually be that simple? I mean, did, we had to figure out what the PID of the thing was, didn't we, before? Well, supposedly it starts with a 3. 3496 because we had to extract it. Yeah, let me, uh, I'll transition this in. So there's, there's our executable. 
that we extracted and that was run through VT and at least some of them pick it up as Meterpreter. So three four nine six. Let's <laughs> Yeah, I was expecting it was got to be some uh a heck of a lot of extra like back and forth to try to somehow tease that thing out, but no, we, we knew what it was because we had to actually extract it previously. <laughs> <laughs> but the way that they had everything turned around and moved, it obviously was that much more difficult. Um, or it wasn't sequential throughout all that. Um, difficulty. I'm going to say difficult. I'm going to give it a high rating. Um, marked as difficult as I have not a lot of experience in Vala. And my mind just entirely blanked as to how to spell Vala 2D. <laughs> oh, I have that experience and it's plugins since those were the extra things that we were running but overall a very good exercise also noticed a problem with the windows standalone version of vol um not giving the or only showing one or two what was the question processes using visual c runtime ELL switching to vol under Remnox resolved the issue. I mean, that's not so much to do with them. I'm sure it's probably something to do with volatility, but this might be an issue that if someone wanted to just do this on a Windows box, as opposed to having to pull out Remnox or another Linux distro or whatever their tool of choice is, or OS of choices, um, from basically slamming their head against the wall and save them a little bit of time, because kind of what happened to me. Um, I, I don't know why. I mean, I tried uh, the current standalone version of Volatility, at the 2.6 branch, and then the 3 that was Python code, because I've already got Python 3 installed on this box, and neither of them were able to give me the answer. But switching over to Volatility underneath Remnox, just Volatility 2.6.1, it resolved it. Same commands and everything else. So I guess I should probably save a portion of that and add it into the... Well, hopefully if you, you're you going to go through and try this yourself and you may only come to this if you actually run and start beating your head against the wall. But I, I think I'm going to... I'm going to copy that. I'm going to dump it inside of Notepad++ is just an extra section. I'm going to add a note to this in the video description, so that way try to save people some trouble as to whether or not if they're going to go through and do this. But if you've got the, 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 the hardware and the availability, I would say just do it all in Remnox, since that seemed to take care of all the problems. I mean, a little bit takes a little bit longer because of the translation because it's a VM inside of a actual or on an actual computer itself it's got other stuff running in the background but um, besides that I mean no real issues so but there we go so that has been the extra practice <laughs> of uh, Cyber Defender's uh, Dump Me exercise utilizing volatility 
in both Windows and halfway through Linux. <laughs> but hopefully everyone's enjoyed it. I know this has been a little bit long at an hour and a half. But with all that being said, I will see everybody in the next video.